Hey guys, and welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 1. I was going to say 2 then. Uh, so this is going to be the final video of this LP. You need help? Hello, sir. You work with the government? You one of them agents? Sure, son. <clears throat> Why you ask? Did you work with a man named Edgar Ross? I have something for him. Edgar Ross? No, but well knew of him. Fine man, if you want the results. Won himself a chest full of medals. I think he went and retired about a year ago. Last I heard, him and his wife moved out to a cabin on Lake Don Julio. Lucky guy, getting to take it easy. He's fighting crime in this dump, that's for sure. <clears throat> Thank you for the information, mister. Thank you indeed. So. Sounds like we have a lead on who killed our dad. Or at least who betrayed him, anyway. So, it seems like the right thing to do to go pay him a little visit, shall we? Now, we know this guy was essentially a piece of shit. So, quite happy to wipe him off the map, to be honest. And this is a mission that when I originally completed the game, I never even knew this mission existed. How do you do? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Hello, young man. Hi. What are you doing out here? Are you out visiting the lake with your family? Uh, no, ma'am. I was looking to deliver a letter to Edgar Ross. Oh. That husband of mine. That bureau just won't get its talons out of him, even though he's retired. Edgar gave them some of the best years of his life. They ought to let him retire in peace. They'll not rest till they've killed him with worry, and he's such a sensitive man. I'm sorry. I shouldn't get so angry. I don't suppose any of this is your fault. There's no need to worry about him nowadays. Well, where is he? He and his brother Philip went hunting on the south side of the San Luis River. Be careful crossing over. They were saying it was dangerous. I sure will, ma'am. And don't worry about a thing. I'm sure your husband will be just fine. Yeah, I'm sure he will. <sighs> You're gonna be a very lonely woman. <laughs> Out here all alone for the rest of your days. So, we need to go back to Mexico and hunt this git down. Looks like this is where he's camped. Let's go see if we can't find some answers. Hey there, mister. How's the hunting? Oh, pretty good, son. Got me a few rabbits, coyote, elk. Still looking for some trophies for the parlor. I've got a letter here for Edgar Ross. You know him? I, I heard he was down in these parts with his wife. Yes, I know him. He's my brother. Gone down river, duck hunt. Must be a pretty important letter to have come all this way. Oh, yes, sir real important. I'll be on my way home as soon as I deliver this message. You best be off then. Just don't get on his bad side. He's got a filthy temper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've certainly seen the evidence of that. Now, his wife did mention him being a uh, sensitive chap. Not quite sure what she means by that. In which direction she means, but uh, let's hope he's sensitive to bullets and revenge. So there's the snaky son of a bitch. Well, an ugly bit of business, but let's get going. Excuse me, you Edgar Ross? Do I know you? Forgive me for startling you, sir. I have a message for you. My name is Jack Marston. You knew my father. 
I see. I remember your father. I've come for you, Ross. <laughs> and you, boy, have sure shit found me. You killed my father. Your father killed himself with the life he lived. You killed him. I saw you. You keep saying that. You sent him to do your dirty work. Then you shot him like a dog. And I'll shoot you like one too, you little piece of trash. Now get out of here before I kill you as well. I ain't going nowhere, old man. Future is now, old man. And you ain't part of it. So, here we go. Dueling. Luckily, I've become pretty good at dueling. <laughs> You've accepted a duel. Well... We didn't get much choice. So wait for it to zoom right in. There we go. Oof. And that was the story of Edgar Ross. Government lackey. Now just another body floating down the river. And Jack Marston can finally put some closure on his past. And that is the true end of the game. And I find that interesting because I literally I didn't know anything about that back in the day. Uh, it was only years later that um, I started hearing that there was actually a secret proper ending to this game. Um, and it's kind of... Well, it's not that cryptic to unlock. You just have to go back to Blackwater. Nope, it's not Blackwater, is it? Uh, yeah, it is Blackwater. And you have to go back to the government building. And there's a random guy that you can talk to. And, uh, yeah, that closes out the story quite nicely. Now, I must say as well, this credit rolling track is phenomenal. Not often I sit here and just listen to the end music, but... This is stunning. Now I will say that Red Dead Redemption 1 um, still can't speak for the second game, although I've heard a lot about it. Um, Red Dead Redemption 1 really hits different. It was probably one of the only games that I can think of. They really give you an emotional attachment to your main character. Um, and you really start to like John Marston. And you kind of get to know him and, you know, you can see he's a bad guy and he's done some terrible things in the past, but I guess his past catches up to him in the end in a really, really cruel and kind of unfair way. But the way they allow you to carry on and play as his son and get revenge and finish up um, leftover quests was truly a stroke of genius. And um, I'm very much looking forward to getting to the second game. But anyway, we are going to go and do the two last stranger missions that we have. And we're not going to get all of the outfits. I made the executive decision earlier today. And that is because they heavily revolve around the gambling minigames. And they're just trash. They're not fun. I spent nearly an hour playing blackjack, trying to um, make a profit. 
and yeah, <laughs> I don't like game mechanics that just waste the player's time. And Blackjack is quite an easy card game to play. In fact, it's probably the easiest card game to play apart from Snap. And the idea that we have to play poker and beat everyone at the table and liars dice. Yeah, I just, I'm just not going to dedicate hours and hours to doing that. But apart from that, we 100%ed everything else. We've done all this. We will do all the strangers. We did find all the locations in the game, although I didn't show that because, well, there wasn't really much to show. And we also completed all the main quests, all the side stuff. It was literally just the outfits that we didn't get. And it was only a handful of those. So now that badass track is actually finished, let's get on to the last two missions, shall we? So we start on the first of two final quests. <clears throat> and this one is called The Wronged Woman. And you have to complete the mission upon uh, appointed time and you have to get to the Church of Blackwater uh, between 6 p.m. and 7 a.m. to trigger it. Quite an interesting one, this. We walk into the church and we see a rather distressed, heavily pregnant woman. Excuse me, miss. Is something wrong? Does it look like something's wrong? Well, you looked kind of upset about something. Perhaps you don't understand what it's like to be disgraced as a woman. To have people gossip about you and turn from you in disgust day after day. <sighs> people can be real unkind, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm Clara. I used to be a nanny. For a family here in Blackwater. But father, he was always so charming. My fool that I was fell for him. Mrs. Thornton, his wife, kicked me out on the street as soon as I started showing. Mr. Thornton turned to drink. Not even a farewell. For a dollar. But I have nothing. They will surely take my baby from me. Perhaps you could find the dissolute bastard. Get even a few dollars for me and my baby to find a home. I would be so grateful, sir. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Well, that sounds like a rather shitty situation she's found herself in. Let's see what we can do about this. So, Harold. Let's go have a word with this gentleman. That's been waving the dicky around. Head off into town. I'm pretty sure he's going to be here day or night. Once midnight actually catches up, of course. Midnight doesn't like to get too close to the church, you understand. Makes him feel a little bit uneasy. I can understand. Anyway, let's go find this guy who has apparently not been, well, I guess he hasn't been a gentleman. Oh, you're having better I've had a drink or two, mister. Excuse me, do you know of a girl named Clara? What's that? Is she one of the waitresses around here? Oh, uh, no. She was a servant at your house. <laughs> the only servant we had was that wee darky girl, Sarah. She left to join the people up north. 
Hmm. No. This girl raised your children. And you and her had an intimacy of sorts. Now look here, laddie. I'm not sure what you're accusing me of. I'm just here to enjoy the tables. Not to hear aspersions against my character. I understand if you want to keep this quiet. So just give me a few dollars so she can set up a modest household for her and the child. You who do you mind, laddie? Or are you just a common criminal? A nerve, are you? <laughs> you think you can blackmail me or insult me over this piffle? You! Good sight! No! Well... It's like we've angered the man. He's either covering something up and really kind of want to keeping it on the down low, or, well, what could the other outcome be? So, Harold, this was a hell of an escalation. Not your wisest uh, choice, I'll be honest. Again, ugly, unfortunate bit of business, but... Now, you cannot disarm this guy, apparently. You have to kill him. So, let's go loot his pockets. It might as well be me, mister. We find $200 on him, which is, uh, you know, not an insignificant amount of money by any stretch of the imagination in Blackwater. That certainly should set Clara Let's go. up for quite a considerable amount of time. Let's go. We hope. Now, it's kind of troubling. Oh, I forgot about this. Yeah, we were heckled in the streets by some other fool. Oh, we're not going to back down. This bastard spitting on my boots. How about I make you famous? All you nah. gotta do is agree to a duel. I killed worse than you. Those are big words, my friend. <laughs> I don't understand how this is gonna make us famous, but sure. But it will. But not in the way that he's hoping. Clifton Ledbetter. Well, this guy is just drunk, probably, and stupid. A little bit eager, bit of an ego on him. I don't think he deserves to die for that, so... Let's just embarrass him, shall we? Make sure he never shoots a gun again. Careful! You like rubbing up on Alright. Now, Clara. Yeah, so interesting how Mr. Thornton doesn't have any idea. I didn't seem to know anything about this, but I'm sure it's nothing, right? And you can see uh, Midnight there actively resisting going anywhere near the church. I understand. I mean, she's a woman of God, so obviously she's a good person. Howdy, miss. Hello, mister. I got you some money. Oh, you are very kind, very kind. And how's Harold? How's my Harold? Well, it didn't go so well. well. I'm afraid he's dead. Dead? <gasps> uh, unfortunately so. I, I, I must go to his grave. Well, I'm afraid I don't know where that is. Oh, he'll be buried in the cemetery in the family plot. If I hurry, I can... I can make it to his funeral. Hmm. Strange. I thought she hated the guy. Well, this is another one of those cases where we have to go and waste um, a load of time. But here we are, two days later. Let's go check out his grave, shall we? I mean, they buried him quick, I'll be honest. That's some pretty sprightly service, if you ask me. Oh, he loved 
Hmm, not the woman we were looking for. Hello, ma'am. Oh. My condolences. Oh, my dear Harold, I can't believe he's gone. I knew his frequenting that gambling boat would be the death of him. The death of him. See. Only 32. I heard that Doc Trollope Clara laughing at the funeral. Oh. I can't understand how strangers can be so cruel. The world is a sad and terrible place. God preserve his soul. Well. I'm real sorry for your loss, ma'am. Take care. It looks like God decided to screw you over, love. And deposit your husband's money into Clara's coffers. Hmm. Leaving me in peace to grief. Okay. Uh, I think we did a bad thing. Yeah. We've, uh kind of been bamboozled here. You visited the cemetery in Blackwater and met the widow Thornton. You soon realized that Clara had been lying about working for the Thorntons. She conned you out, uh, she conned you into robbing and killing Harold. Yeah, that's, that's kind of, kind of shitty that one. So here we are guys, our final mission of the game. Now, you can only do this mission if you've completed the previous one. This is the Prohibitionist. As angels, if you just put down the booze. Unacceptable. We are campaigning in Congress. We will save this nation from itself. In the land of liberty, men should be free. To live soberly, without fear that the perils of drink may overcome them. Do you like what you hear, sir? No, not particularly. You'll take away our last freedoms, friend. The freedom to forget about our troubles. You don't have troubles, friend. You have all the joys of heaven here on earth if you just put down the bottle. You don't know me so well, friend. Because if you did, you know how moronic that sounds. I, Abner Forsyth, am not afraid to be called moronic, sir. Now that I don't doubt. Good day, sir. Oh, it shall be, sir. When we live temperately alongside one another, you are doomed. Doom! So very nice. And quite frankly, I think you're talking a little old shit. Everybody has the option to not drink. But I'd rather have the choice to indulge if I wanted than to let daddy government decide for me. So, anyway, after having a little chat with Abda. Abdo? That was his name? It's got a weird name. Um, we have this mark show up. Hey, mister. I heard about you. Yeah, sure you did. <laughs> you that boy killed Bill Williamson over in Mexico. No, you got me mistaken, partner. I ain't. Boy told me all about you since you come to town. Town? Is that what you call this place? Well, what's wrong with cesspit? <laughs> I think this dude's getting us confused with our dad. You know, I saw you talking to that Abner Forsyth. Who? The temperance movement man. The man trying to put me in a poorhouse. You don't say. Well, ain't that a crying shame? He's Jeremiah Somerset's pawn. The industrialist wants a the state to outlaw public consumption of liquor. 
so's he can make a fortune selling personal gin stills. These bar owners like me begging in the street. Oh, well, my heart just bleeds for the three. I can't figure <laughs> out who I dislike the most. You kill Abner Forsyth. I do right by you. But you need to find yourself someone else. Oh. Kill him. <laughs> now we've got a choice here. We can warn him or we can kill him. If we warn this him, then like we get a lot of honor. If we choose to kill him, we uh, actually get quite a nasty penalty to be honest. So if we kill him, all the properties around the map that we can buy double in price, and so does alcohol at the bar. But, eh. My mistake, ma'am. Or should I say that's if we warn him. If we kill him, we get discounts and everything. But also, if we kill him, we lose a lot of honor and we get a bounty. Unless you use a long-range sniper rifle. But, because we're playing as good Jack, we're going to warn him. A sin! A sin, I tell you! Hey there, mister. Good to see you, my friend. Decided to join me and recant the evils of the bottle? <laughs> I keep wishing, partner. Now, you best be moving on soon. The fellas around here want you dead. Oh, I guess the path of God will lead me elsewhere in this benighted kingdom. Thank you for sparing the life of a poor servant. Kindly take this. Hey, you take care of yourself, Abner. I mean, I don't agree with what he's saying, but I don't think he should be killed for it. Tis the land of the free, after all. So, now we've got to go and tell him. I believe you're a dead gum liar. He's not gonna be happy. Hey, mister, I wanna talk to you. What is it? I heard you tipped off Abner Forsyth after I told you to kill him. Now he'll be spreading his nonsense all over the territory. I'm not here to do your dirty work. Oh, yeah? Well, you can forget about drowning your sorrows anywhere around here. Round here, it's gonna be double the going rate for you. So be it. Yeah, so if we want to drink now, it costs twice the amount. Which I believe is like $2 instead of $1, so it's still not a huge amount. And it doesn't matter about the properties, because of course, um, we have already really bought them all. So, it's of little consequence to us. Now, if you want to kill him without getting the bounty on your head, you can get up to a high-rise area and then just take him out with a rifle. So anyway, guys, that's basically as far as I want to take Red Dead 1. I have really, really enjoyed playing this game. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much for engaging, and I'll see you next time.